folks. I hope you are all happy and healthy. Um, I wish I was seeing you in person, but but so be it. All right. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how fluid moves within the body. Um, we're going to focus on, primarily on the cardiovascular system, but we'll also talk about um, the lymphatic vessels that help return um, fluid to the heart. Last week, we talked about the respiratory system, right? And remember, the respiratory system has this singular job, which is to remove carbon dioxide um, and import oxygen into the body. The cardiovascular system's function is related to that. It's essentially the transport superhighway, uh, brings oxygen and nutrients to tissue fluid and removes waste products. So carbon dioxide, as you learned last week, is going to leave through the lungs and other metabolic waste is going to be filtered out by the kidneys. So transport of blood, right, which is, oh, my pen's not working here. Transport of blood, which allows for the distribution of nutrients and waste in the body to appropriate locations. And then separately, the exchange of materials between the cardiovascular system, that is the bloodstream and the tissues of the body. As a result of the structure of the arteries, veins, and capillaries, the different types of blood vessels, our cardiovascular system also generates blood pressure and is capable of regulating the amount of blood in any one area according to um, the demands our body makes upon it. So we're going to start with an overview of um, the blood vessels and the heart, and then we'll jump into the path that blood follows through the body. So basic anatomy, you've got two parts of this system. The heart, which is made of um, two pumps whose action is synchronized, um, and then the blood vessels, which are a set of interconnected pipes. As we talked about last week, there are three major kinds of blood vessels. Um, arteries, come on. There we go. Arteries, which transition into arterioles, um, which transition into capillary beds, and then small veins, venules, and then larger structures, veins. Um, it's sort of amazing to, to think about, but each of us as adults has about 60,000 miles of blood vessels um, although I'm sure someone figured that out by calculating it rather than actually stripping them out of somebody and lying them end to end. All right, so remember, arteries carry blood away from the heart, away. Um, and these are tubes that are made of three layers of tissue, um, the, an inder an inner endothelial layer, right? So that's epithelial tissue, continuous um, lining of cells, um, a very thick band of smooth muscle with elastic fibers, and then a layer of connective tissue uh, that anchors the arteries within the body. The two arteries that I'd like for you guys to to actually be able to identify in this course are um, both part of the great vessels that arise from the heart. So the aorta, which comes directly out of the heart um, and has this arch-like shape to it, it then penetrates um, through the body, the diaphragm, the thoracic cavity, down into the rest of the body, becoming the abdominal aorta. Then we have the pulmonary trunk, which is going to send deoxygenated blood 
to each lung, so it transitions into the pulmonary arteries. Um, the pressure in arteries is higher, blood pressure is highest in arteries, um, and nowhere is it higher than the aorta. So blood is moving really fast and um, 16 just a second, um, and it's also at incredibly high pressure, particularly in the aorta. Arterioles, small arteries, so the smallest of these might have only a couple smooth muscle fibers around them. And they're, well, I was going to say their job, but part, part of their function is actually controlling how much blood is in any one area of the body. And because of that, they have a role in blood pressure. So the prefix vaso or vaso means vessel. So vasoconstriction means an increase, or sorry, a decrease in diameter um, of the vessel, which leads to an increase in blood pressure, right? So this is a decrease in the size of the lumen, but an increase in, in pressure, sort of like when you put your finger across a hose. Vasodilation, on the other hand, um, when things dilate, they, um, they enlarge. So that's an increased diameter, which is associated with lower blood pressure. Next, we come to the capillaries. Capillaries are microscopic. Um, and remember the tissue that, the lung tissue that we looked at in lab last week. The cells, excuse me, are made of a single layer of squamous epithelium. So that simple squamous epithelium. Remember squamous, you want to associate that with squashed. Um, so all the way in the right here, we have an image of a single erythrocyte um, going through a capillary. So you can see exactly how small these guys are. And these are, this is the only, um, these are the only vessels where that are thin enough to allow for the exchange of nutrients, waste, and gases with tissues. Our capillary beds are present in all regions of the body, and that's important because that means that um, no cells are very far away from a capillary, and the nutrients and oxygen and garbage disposal that it um, allows. Um, but it turns out that not all of our capillary beds are open at the same time. How do you keep blood at high, that's right, the heart is, is pumping, so how do you keep blood from flowing into capillary beds? And the answer, pre-capillary sphincters. So remember a sphincter is um, a band of circular muscle, usually smooth muscle, um, that's when it constricts, it essentially can clamp down on whatever tube it happens to be surrounding. So let's say there's a bear. You see a bear. Cindy's absolute favorite example for everything. You see a bear and this happens, this particular capillary bed happens to be in your stomach or your intestines. Well, you don't actually need to be absorbing, you don't need blood flow to, to your intestines or your stomach at a time when there's an emergency. So the pre-capillary sphincters are given a signal to shut down and that allows the blood oops, that allows the blood to go through an arteriovenous shunt. It's sometimes also called a meta arteriole. It's essentially a throughway, right? So that does two things. One, it restricts blood flow to this area and allows for that blood to be taken elsewhere where it's perhaps more needed, for example, 
in your skeletal muscles and your brain, your lungs. Um, <clears throat> and it also raises blood pressure because you've prevented blood from flowing through these capillary vents. So I said before in the aorta, blood moves at about 16 feet per second. Contrast that with its speed in the capillaries, which is about a quarter of an inch per minute. So really slow. Um, right, that happens because there are more capillaries than arterioles and venules. Um, and it's really important because the exchange, as we learned last week, the exchange of substances between the blood and tissue fluid happens by our friend, the passive transport diffusion, right, based on a concentration gradient. Diffusion takes time, right? So the slower the blood moves, the, um, the more time there is for what we call capillary exchange. There are two different um, opposing pressures that control exchange at the capillaries. Um, osmotic pressure, right, which is sort of how much water is in the tissue or interstitial fluid. So inter, remember, means between. And stitial means space. So tissue fluid, interstitial fluid, same thing. So there's a certain amount of pressure associated with how much water is in the tissue fluid. And then we have hydrostatic, whoops, I need to switch colors here, hydrostatic pressure. Um, think of that as essentially blood pressure. So you've got hydrostatic pressure pushing things out of the capillaries and osmotic pressure pushing water and materials into the capillary. Exactly what's going to happen at any point in the capillary bed depends on the balance between those opposing pressures. So the name of the process of, or sort of the, the exchange at the capillaries is described as capillary exchange. And the process is um, referred to as filtration. So at the arterial end of a capillary bed, the net pressure pushes material out. In the middle of a capillary bed, materials moving in both directions and by the venous end, the osmotic pressure dominates. So the tissue fluid pressure dominates. And so much material is reabsorbed into, um, into the capillary. So high blood pressure at the arterial end pushes out. Then you have um, movement, but no, essentially no change and then reabsorption, right? This process is based on um, pressure and diffusion. Okay, so here's my, <laughs> here's my animated picture, which doesn't get animated when I do the pen cast. Um, so let me orient you a little bit here. So here's our friend, the capillary, which at the arterial end has lots of oxygen. There's my oxygen, a lot of glucose. Um, and the glucose and the oxygen are um, transported into the tissue fluid. And then from there, they diffuse into the cytoplasm of a cell within the body, right? And this is based on concentration. So that's why we've got 
many fewer glucose molecules in the lower left of the picture. As cells do aerobic cellular respiration, right, they produce water and carbon dioxide. Um, and those diffuse by the venule end out of the tissue, <clears throat> out of the cells into the tissue fluid, and then from there into the capillary. And that answer to that question, why is the exchange of molecules here so important, is our friend aerobic cellular respiration. Glucose plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water as waste, along with ATP, um, energy to recharge ATP. All right, so from capillaries, we go to venules. They come together, the um, capillaries come together into venules, which then join to form veins. And if you look at a venule in cross-section, you've got um, epithelial cells right here. You've got a little connective tissue and smooth muscle and then a large layer, a larger layer of connective tissue. Remember that veins carry blood back to the heart, toward the heart. Um, and although we often, we, we've come to associate a blue color with veins, um, we learned last week that you can have veins that carry oxygenated blood. Those are the pulmonary veins that carry blood from, from the lungs toward the heart. So um, one way to recognize a vein is that it has a much larger lumen than an artery. And in fact, most of our blood is in our veins um, because of that larger lumen. You have the same three layers as in arteries and veins. Um, so you've got endothelium, smooth muscle layer, pen's not working here, smooth muscle layer, and then connective tissue. I think I just ran out of batteries. Okay, um, but notice that the smooth muscle layer is much thinner. The largest veins are the vena cava, and there's the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. They carry deoxygenated blood from systemic circulation, so from all the tissues of the body, uh, back to the heart. And then we've got the right pulmonary veins and the left pulmonary veins that carry oxygenated blood back to the heart for distribution to the body. Let's see. Oh, my little gif isn't going to work here. All right, so veins um, that carry blood against the force of gravity have structures called valves in them. And the job of a valve is to allow blood to flow in only a single direction. Um, so this is an actual valve that, if we could see the GIF, um, would be opening and closing for us. Um, systole, if you're wondering about this, is the contractile phase of a heartbeat or cardiac cycle. So when the heart beats, blood is forced up past the um, cusps of or leaflets of the vein and in diastole the resting phase of the heartbeat that blood falls back down and in doing so because of the way these valves are built it automatically closes and that prevents blood from flowing backwards oops um, so skeletal muscle has some role to play in what's called venous return um, and that's because when you have a really toned skeletal muscle, um, it helps to force, essentially squeezes the lumen of the vein um, and, and helps to propel blood back toward the heart. So venous turn depends on three things, skeletal muscle, contraction, um, some 
move respiratory movements. Um, we're not going to talk about that really in this class. And then the presence of valves. All right, so differences between arteries and veins to sort of sum this section up. Um, blood pressure is highest in arteries. So right as blood leaves the heart, it's ejected from the heart up here, right? Goes up really high, and then it drops as the heart relaxes. Goes By the time you're in the capillaries, blood pressure is much lower, but not as low as it is in the venules and veins. Um, and in fact, blood pressure is lowest in <clears throat> the um, superior and inferior vena cava um, as blood is returned to the heart from systemic. All right, so function of arteries, carry blood, come on, pen, away from the heart. Function of veins is return blood to the heart. And the function of capillaries is exchange of materials. Blood pressure is highest in the arteries, lowest in veins, and low in capillaries. The lumen diameter, <coughs> excuse me, that is the, um, the diameter of the blood um, is in comparison, right? For capillaries, there it's incredibly tiny, usually a single red blood cell at a time. Veins have the largest lumen And arteries have a smaller lumen in comparison to a vein serving the same part of the blood. Um, the wall thickness in arteries is <laughs> this is not working, is it? Let's see. Come on. There we go. It is very thick with arteries much thinner. Oh, guys, I'm sorry about this. I'm going to have to go get a new tip on my pencil for the next one of these. Okay, I'm trying to write um, thinner. And for capillaries, it's a single cell thickness. How many layers of tissue? three for arteries, three for, and one layer of tissue that is one cell thick for capillaries. In keeping with that, right, there is, um, there is no, there's no muscle or elastic fiber associated with the capillaries for those pre-capillary centers that I described. Um, in comparison to the same size, um, artery veins have less smooth muscle and fewer elastic fibers, and arteries have more. Valves are not present in arteries. They are not present in capillaries, but they are present in veins. All right. So in this video, we're going to talk a bit more about capillary exchange um, because it turns out that more water is pushed out of our capillaries than has time to be reabsorbed before going back 